Hey guys, welcome back to Motorcycle Maintenance Channel. Today we have a beautiful Kawasaki Z900 motorcycle. Unfortunately, our buddy Tango Delta went down on it, destroying his uh, stator cover. So on this episode, we're going to show you guys how to replace a stator cover on a Kawasaki Z900 motorcycle. Stay tuned. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this 6 millimeter Allen hex bolt out to remove this guard so that we can access this bolt down here one of these eight millimeter bolts down here so that's that's up and out of the way enough we don't have to take it off all the way just enough to access that nut now we're just going to go around loosening all of these eight millimeter bolts to take off our damaged uh, stator cover. And like on the other crankcase covers that we've done in the past, these bolts are not gonna be on there very tight because it's going into aluminum. So it won't take too much effort to un unbolt them. And we're gonna carefully look at each one of them to make sure they all kind of look the same. They all seem to be the same link so far. And this is gonna be a common, a common part to replace. It's gonna scrape on the ground every time you drop it, either on this side or the other one. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave that there to know that this is the bolt it goes into there. It's just a fairing stay. Or in this case, it's not really a fairing, but a, a little guard, heat, heat shielding, radiator hose guard, I guess. And they're all the same, so. What, what that tells us is it doesn't really matter where they go back in because they're all the same size. So, all right. We have your oil pan here. You're gonna wanna have an oil pan ready to catch the oil. I mean, you could drain the oil, which I thought about doing, but I didn't because we're going to uh, do an oil change episode later so. okay and there is the stator leave it there for a little bit you just take out some of these broken pieces of road and debris and aluminum. Um, a stator is the bike's alternator. Bike, bikes don't have alternators, they have stators. But the principle is the same. It rotates around the coils, charges the battery system and the lights and all that. So we want to take all of the debris out because it's not good to have these things spinning around in there real fast it'll cause marring and scarring and probably mess up the stator cover so we want to get want to get rid of all of the pieces of road debris chunks of aluminum they got stuck it stuck in there just kind of wipe it clean there's no need for that Your electrical charging system. All right. I was kind of hoping this would just be a cover and not actually have the stator built into it. You see pieces of Lime Creek Road right there. All right. So we're going to have to actually remove the stator from the stator cover. Just fine, we can do it. Just 
an extra step. It's not a six. It's a five, I'm sure. Out. This is going to be different. That bolt's going to be different than the four that hold these guys in. There it goes there. Okay. Holds the little. This this one underneath this bolt right here. And what that bracket does is it holds this wire back in a way. Okay. So take the gasket out. Oop, that little Dell, Dell pin is important. Put him here. Now. Take that out. I think that's just pieces of the gasket. All right, well, there's our damage stator cover. And a large amount of Lime Creek Road is in there. Whoops. One, two. Three, four. All right. And those are all the same. So that's good. And that's going to require some Loctite for sure. All right, guys. So now we're going to put on this new stator cover. But the first thing we're going to do, and I didn't see it in the forums or in the manual, but I do notice that it has a little bit of sealant here on the corners, on the inside and outside. So I'm just going to hit this up with a little bit of RTV sealant. This is a good friend of mine and the last thing we want is for him to have an oil leak because of the work we did. So I'm just going to put the RTV sealant in a similar location as where some of this old jelly seal stuff was that I had to scratch off because odds are is it was there for a reason. It looks like it on these little Crooked joints is where it was. Um, so, I'm just going to put just a tab here and a tab there just to help it stay dry. Um, I use this stuff on my Kawasaki case saver, or my Yamaha, on my Honda case saver too. So, knowing he has Honda quality sealant on his Kawasaki should make him happy. Here we have our new gasket. <clears throat> I'm actually going to put a little bit of this on here as well. And it doesn't say to do it, but I know of, but I know these parts and they will leak. So we're just going to put a little extra 
just around the wires and major leak zones. Make sure we get this good. And looks like some of the crazier joints on the aluminum. Put some there. So there's that. Now we have to put our gasket on, but before we do that, we need to pull out this dowel pin. So hold it in the same orientation. Oh yeah, look at that. It's got sealing on there too. So I put it there, but it's pretty thick on the old, on the stock one. So I'm gonna just dab it on there a little thicker. There we go. All right, so we have this. We got our sealant all around there. Nice and thick. Right here a little bit too. And our dowel pin. So see this dowel pin that's right here? We're gonna take him out and put him over here. Same one. And you know it goes in that hole because it's not, that hole doesn't go all the way through like the screw holes. I'm just gonna use this rag to push on it. Okay. And there should be another dowel pin. Yep, it's right there. Make sure it doesn't fall out. That's good because it's on there. And now we'll put the new gasket. And what's good about the dowel pins is they kind of hold the, the gasket in place. Yeah, I just don't like the way that's sitting in there. Let's turn it up, turn it around. Should be fine. We'll hit it with a hammer if not. He loves when I use a hammer on his bike. All right. There we go. I don't want to stress the gasket out too much. And the, this wire has to go actually underneath this gasket. So pull that guy out. Put him there. This wire goes here around that little area that we applied a lot of sealant to. some more sealing on there. I'd rather have too much than too little. Okay, and then this little boot goes in there. See that little rubber boot? Take the dog hair out. <laughs> Do not get dog hair on your sealant because it'll leak it. So I'm just gonna rub it around, all around this rubber, this rubber thing. So the last thing we want is an oil leak. That goes there, perfect. And I wanna use blue Loctite because these things are whirling and vibrating and Moving around, probably get dropped in the dirt again. So we wanna make sure all this stuff 
stays sealed and tight. So we'll put our, our blue Loctite in it. I would personally, I would use, I would think you you should use red Loctite. Um, the forums though say to use non-permanent locking agent, which is the blue Loctite. If you look at the screws though, they seem to have a red locking agent on it from the factory. But I was still able to take them off, which tells me that it probably wasn't permanent. It's just the color that the factory uses. that there and those get torqued down to 12 Newton meters which we'll do after we get these seated so I'm just gonna take our screws like this I've cleaned them off from grease and debris already and I'm just gonna be generous with my Loctite here Put them in. Now you definitely want to do this with a torque wrench because if you over torque it, you will crack the um, your new stator cover because it's aluminum. case over here. I'll get to that in a second. Hey, you wait one second, sure. I this okay. This here. This there. All right, there we go. Now for the difficult and frustrating part of trying to get all this to line up correctly. Shouldn't be as bad as a clutch cover. But um, these things are never easy.
so now we're going to put this is going to go on there i just need to see what four bolts they cover because there's four bolts on there this is a case saver so the next time he throws his bike in the ground he can drive it home afterwards and it doesn't break his stator cover so it's going to be those four bolts there so i need to know that so that i can I just I need to make sure I thread the gasket around each one of these screws. So. Oh, Kawasaki. All right, it seems to be going in there just fine. Which means the gasket's out of the way. So now just to put it on, for some reason Kawasaki's love to get hit with hammers. We're not gonna pound it, just you know, a little love tap here, a love tap there. There it goes. Alright. So now to tighten these bolts in a star like uh, pattern. Well, I don't know about star, but you know, here, 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 here. But we're also going to put on this case saver because not giving this particular rider a hard time or anything, but I mean, this is part of riding motorcycles. You ride two wheels long enough, you're going to drop it. You just, it's going to happen. It happens to us all, it happens to the best of us. It happens to Valentino Rossi, it happens to Mark Marquez. It's sure as hell gonna happen to you. It's just part of it's part of riding motorcycles. You you ride them and then they fall. Whatever. So this case saver, the idea of this thing, mad racing here, is so that next time when he when he dropped this one, I had to go home, pick up my truck. And then come back and pick him up off the side of the road. But if he had this case saver on here, ideally he would drop it and be able to ride home and just the case saver would be messed up and he'd have to replace this one part. So I'll put the case saver right there. And with the case saver, we're gonna have <coughs> four bolts that aren't factory. So we'll have four factory bolts left over after we're done. So we'll see if Mad Racing gave us an eight millimeter, like the stock ones. Oh, they did. Good, I like that. I would highly, rec highly recommend you don't get an RNG case saver. I know they have glowing reviews online and there's YouTube videos saying what wonderful things they are I didn't have good luck with it on my CBR I'm not really tightening these down. I'm just kind of putting them on there finger tight. When I tighten it, it'll be in a crisscross pattern. Okay. Should have four of these guys left over. Let's tighten it. This guy down to 12 Newton meters. Start here. And before, I'm not even going to bring it to full torque. I'm just going to slowly tighten each one on each side. It's 
very important that these are installed with a sensitive torque wrench because these, n these bolts are designed to snap if they get over torqued so that they don't crack your engine casing. Okay, we have now repaired his damaged stator cover. Put these covers on his clutch cover, his crankcase cover, and his crankcase. Um, so that way if he drops it on the other side, he won't have an oil leak like he had here. And just for all of you viewers at home to know, when he did leak oil, we went and, and meticulously cleaned it up off the road so as to not cause another accident. Um, and I, I think that it's a good idea of your, just to be a good Samaritan if you have a similar accident on the road. Um, pick up your oil. Don't leave a booby trap for another motorcyclist to come along and, and go flying through the dirt. A good way to, to pick oil up off of the, the road is um, get some dishwashing soap because it'll cut through the grease and soak it with dishwashing soap. Kind of scrub it a little bit. We scrubbed it with these, these yellow towels. Um, and then rinse it off with some bleach. Uh, the dishwashing soap, rinse it out, rinse it out with bleach, <laughs> and then pour some water or vinegar uh, on top of the bleach, and that'll keep the road somewhat in better condition for uh, you know, your fellow motorcyclist. Stay out of the grease. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.